Welcome back to another episode of Haunted and Historic Australia. In this episode of Criminals, Cutthroats and Convicts, we take a look at Australia's first cannibal, Alexander Pierce. We are no strangers to absconders in the colony now. We've had Black Caesar, the first bush ranger, and Buckley, who lived with the first people for 32 years. There were many others too, who had stories to tell, but not a story like Pierce. His was a love story, not exactly between a man and woman, or even a man and man. His was the love between man and flesh. Yes, Alexander Pierce was our first cannibal. Pierce's story started off much like many of the other convicts sent to Australia for the crime of stealing. Born in Monaghan Island, approximately 1790, he was a Catholic farmer in the town of Armagh at almost 30 years old when he was convicted. He was convicted for stealing six pairs of shoes and sentenced to seven years transportation. Pierce was one of the men loaded up onto the convict ship Castle Forbes that left directly from Ireland on the 3rd of October 1819 and arrived into Port Jackson on the 27th of January 1820. After the arrival into Sydney, 136 men were sent on to Van Diemen's Land or Tasmania to arrive in Hobart on the 1st of March 1820. They've noted down that Alexander Pierce was approximately five foot three and a quarter. His hair was brown, his eyes were hazel, and he was 30 years old at the time. They've said also that his skin was pockmarked on his face. Now, not long after arriving into Hobart, he was into trouble quite quickly. They've noted down on May the 16th, 1821, he was trying to steal turkeys and ducks from the yard of Match Slime. He received 50 lashes for this. On the 17th of September, 1821, he was charged for being drunk and disorderly and absent from his lodge, receiving 25 lashes. Again on the 26th of November 1821, being drunk and disorderly again, stealing wine, the property of Peter Copeland, he received 50 lashes once again. On the 29th, only three days later, he stole a wheelbarrow and received 50 more lashes. And he was also put on the jail gang for six months. In March of 1822, he absconded into the woods, but was captured after three months. So he must have been able to live quite well in the bush. By now they were really fed up with him, so they sent him away from Hobart Town. He was sent on to Macquarie Harbour. This was located to the far west of Tasmania nearby to modern day Strawn. As we know, the conditions on the west side of Tasmania are quite wild. Cradle Mountain, it's unlike the east side where there's plenty of beaches and it's all modern. Much of the western side, especially at that time, was untouched and still is today. There in the middle of a bay area, was Sarah Island. It was Tasmania's oldest convict settlement, one of the most brutal penal establishments at the time. More than 180 escapes were made and flogging was very frequent. 
Although it was remote, for a time it was one of the largest shipbuilding yards in the colonies. Today, it is viewed on as a tourist attraction, an historic site for many to see what life was like for those convicts back in the day. But back to Pierce. He was transferred here, but it wasn't long before he and a few of his mates decided to make a run for it again. It was around about six weeks from when he was sent there. Thus began the journey that has gone down in history for both Australia and Ireland and strangely enough America but we'll get to that later. As we know that western side of Tasmania was unexplored and very awkward to travel. The men that accompanied Pierce were Alexander Dalton, Thomas Bodnam, William Kennelly, Matthew Travers, Edward Brown, Robert Greenhill and John Maver. How they came across each other were that they were on the same job or work site, cutting down and chopping up the hue and pine, which was a large tree in the area. They got together and came up with a plan to escape. What they wanted to do was commandeer a whale boat, sail north out of Macquarie Harbour and head up to freedom on a Pacific island or through to China if they could. The plan didn't go how they imagined. They overpowered the security, but struggled on their getaway. Instead of running down to the water, they all fled to the mountains and the rainforest that surrounded the harbour. They headed east on what would be a treacherous and ill-fated journey for all of them except Pierce. Not even these days do many people travel into this area unless they're very experienced. Much like the Blue Mountains of New South Wales, if you don't know what you're doing, you're likely to get lost and possibly die out there. So it's still quite uncharted region. Eight days into their journey, they found that they couldn't find food or that there just wasn't any around. They became very hungry and they were starving at this point. They realized pretty quickly that the only way that they were going to survive was to eat each other. One of the men wasn't liked very much as he had volunteered to be a flogger and those kind of people weren't looked upon favorably. This was Alexander Dalton. So naturally being the least favorite, he was gobbled up first. Two of the men, Brown and Kennelly, fearing that they may be killed and eaten next, and they probably would have been, decided to turn back and go back to Sarah Island. They actually made it back to the coast of Macquarie Harbour, but died pretty soon after arriving as they were completely exhausted, malnourished and didn't make it. Five men continued. Green Hill seemed to be the leader of the pack as he was the one with the ax. And it's known that he was the one who decided on who to kill and eat. <laughs> so naturally they all tried to befriend him really quickly. He also used his navigational skills with the sun and the stars to carry the party east for almost 42 days. However, they still weren't able to find food. 
So one by one, the weakest man was killed by Greenhill and his axe, providing the food for everybody else. But this was only going to last so long. There were only five men. Another problem that they found in eating each other was that the human body is made up of mainly protein and they weren't getting enough carbohydrate to sustain them. We know that fat and protein burns quite quickly and these men were walking non-stop until dusk. So they were burning off whatever they ate quite quickly, which meant although they although they stuffed themselves full of human, <laughs> that's quite odd to say, although they stuffed themselves full, it didn't sustain them for very long and they needed to kill again. After five weeks of traipsing east, there were only three of them left. Greenhill and his pal Travers and Alexander Pierce. Now, it wasn't looking good for Pierce until Travers was bitten by a snake and started to get gangrenous. It got to the point where Travers was begging them to kill him. Greenhill didn't want to, but Pierce and Travers talked him round. And while Travers slept, Greenhill took his life. Now it's been noted down that initially when they killed Alexander Dalton, they were cooking the men and eating them cooked. By the end, we understand they were just being eaten raw. Now it's come down to Greenhill and Pierce. Greenhill no longer had his friend Travers to help him. And one of them had to kill the other. It didn't look good for Pierce because he didn't have the axe, Greenhill did. However, Pierce was able to stay awake longest, long enough to knock Greenhill on the head with his own axe. After the cat and mouse game that Pierce and Greenhill had, Greenhill was eaten and Pierce had to go on alone. Eventually he arrived in a settlement area, located a convict shepherd and was able to live pretty roughly. Stealing sheep, robbing farms. This went on for a few months before he was captured. Now, Pierce tells the authorities the truth. That they ran away, they couldn't sustain themselves, and they had to eat each other. Only the strongest survived. But he was laughed at. They wouldn't believe that a man could eat another man. It was unheard of. That was barbaric. People didn't do that kind of thing anymore, not for thousands of years, possibly, or hundreds. But they didn't believe him. The examining magistrate and local parson, Reverend Robert Knockwood, thought that Pierce had made up the story to cover for the other guys who were still absconding into the bush. After all, they were known as bush rangers. And it was widely known that many of the bush rangers could live for months and months at a time. He was returned to Sarah Island in chains where the other convicts saluted him, treating him like a king when he arrived. I mean, this guy had escaped and made up stories about being a cannibal. They thought it was hilarious. Idolised by the other men, another man by the name of Thomas Cox wanted desperately to get out of there. As we know, Sarah Island is cruel, an awful place to be for convicts. Thomas Cox pestered Alexander Pierce to escape with him again. And I guess Pierce decided that, oh well, he wasn't hung, he wasn't killed. He'll just come back to the colony if he fails. So only a few months after he'd been returned to Sarah Island, he was absconding again from a work party. It is known that this time he went north 
along the east coast of Macquarie Harbour. But apparently they didn't get very far before Pierce says that Thomas Cox couldn't swim and that he was only going to be a burden on him. I think we can all guess where this is going. Pierce surrendered 11 days later and once again he tried to tell the truth. He had said that Thomas and he had left and gone north along the Macquarie Harbour. They had been able to find food, but they still couldn't work out how to escape. And becoming enraged once Thomas told Pierce that he couldn't swim and he would only slow him down, Pierce cooked him and ate him. And when he surrendered those 11 days later, he still had pieces of Thomas in his pockets. The scariest and most unnerving part was that he still had other food with him in his possession. So we're not really sure how it came to be that he was still munching on pieces of Thomas when they found him. Although he has said that human flesh was by far preferable to ordinary food and that uh, he'd acquired the taste for eating human. So in this instance, he's gone down in history as being a cannibal, even though he says that he was very uncomfortable with his inhumane conduct. He did show signs of remorse for what he'd done, but he still did it. And I don't think he needed to kill Thomas. I don't think he needed to kill Thomas. So he became quite comfortable in his cannibalism. And this is why he's famous. On June the 20th, 1824, Alexander Pierce stood trial for murder and cannibalism. The Chief Justice John Lewis Pedder was the one who judged him for the murder of Thomas Cox. Pierce really had no defence. It was recorded there was nothing said on his behalf. He'd already confessed to the murders and the cannibalism. So it was a brief trial and of course he was found guilty. Alexander Pierce would be hung and his body then given for science to surgeons for dissection. It was 30 days later, on July 19th, 1824, nine in the morning at Hobart Town Jail, Pierce was hung. Now from here it gets quite strange. They handed over Pierce's body for dissection, which was uncommon at the time, but they figured that a man that could eat other men should be thoroughly investigated. <laughs> so they took his skull and strangely, it's been found in America. The skull of Alexander Pierce was souvenired at the time by surgeon Dr. Henry Crockett at Hobart Town where his autopsy was. It is now located, however, at the Pennsylvania Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology. The label on the skull states, Skull of Pierce, a convict and cannibal who executed in New South Wales and the date. Isn't that odd? At present, the government in Tasmania are trying to organise for the head, the skull, to be sent back to Australia for historical purposes. I mean, Alexander Pierce was Australian. Okay, he was Irish, but he died here. And he would have lived here, I guess, had he not escaped or been hung. So they want that skull brought back to Australia. And the Irish probably don't want it. <laughs> the Irish have said that he was a, a cannibal an Irish cannibal that lured Australians to their death. And an American book 
has said he was the man-eater of Macquarie Harbour. Yes, there's been many books and movies about Alexander Pierce. I mean, they treated him like royalty when he went back to Sarah Island before his second and, and last escape. But he's gained quite a lot of fame since his death for not such a nice reason either. So there you have it. Australia's first cannibal. And although he came from Ireland, us Aussies have claimed him as our own. <laughs> we want his skull back. <laughs> oh, we do hope you've enjoyed this episode. It's been quite enjo- enjoyable making it. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and slap that notification bell so you're aware when we post more episodes.